It is such a gift to be preaching here, my home church, where I grew up. But I also am here and um, dedicate this sermon in memory of my mentor, Reverend Marlene White Rabbit Helgamo. She was the pastor of All Nations Indian Church, UCC, in Minneapolis, but also the director of CAME, the Council for American Indian Ministries, a ministry of neighbors in need in the United Church of Christ. On the Sunday of my ordination, she gave a sermon from this pulpit. I also give this sermon in gratitude for the people whose land we are standing and sitting on, the Delaware, the Kaskaskia, and the ancient Hopewell nation. A bewildered Samaritan woman has come to her usual well to find, of all people, a Jewish man, a person she would never associate with. He calls himself Jesus and tells her of a living water. She says to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Within this context, living water is everlasting life through Jesus Christ. As followers of Jesus, we know that he was not only concerned with the water of everlasting life, but the water that comes from our faucet. So Jesus knew that this water that we live and breathe and have was powerful as well. For generation after generation, this same water that comes from our faucet that we drink every day has endured extractive and destructive practices for the sake of power and profit. Yet Jesus also knew the power of water and that it has the power to move mountains, transform landscapes, and separate land mass. Water here is a sacred and powerful element also in so many stories of both the Hebrew and New Testament stories beginning with the first story of creation in Genesis, moving on to Noah and the flood, Moses parting the Red Sea, baptism of Jesus, and today the Samaritan at the well. Water is central and sacred. It is part of every aspect of who we are mentally, physically, spiritually, and literally, our bodies make up as much as 60% of water. You ever wonder if you slosh around a little bit, all that water inside your body? Last week, Reverend Dr. Tim began his series with the assertion that humans and creation are inseparable. Indigenous worldviews expands this notion 
and deepens it to say that we are interdependent with creation. Another way of describing this concept is the image of all creation as part of a web of life. If one strand is broken, it breaks the connection to other strands. For example, on the endangered species list, if sharks were to die off, it would set off a chain reaction of destruction of other species of habitat and even the balance of the ocean itself. The Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota tradition calls this concept metakweyase, or we are all related. The water would be considered and addressed as a relative. This is meant literally. We are taught to respect and to regard our relatives that we are in relationship with and that we must respect each other. This deep and intimate connection with and centering creation is in many ways the opposite of what our Western culture has taught us, which I will also add in many ways is, could be considered a misinterpretation of scripture, that the earth is not made up of a hierarchy with humans on top, and for us to dominate and subdue the earth at our pleasure. This way of thinking has separated us not only creation, but our relationship with God. Now we are at a moment of crisis, desperately thirsty for a new way to live. In this church, I grew up every Sunday, every gathering, hearing and living out the words, we enter to worship and depart to serve. I feel as though I have been taught and grown up to live this in every aspect of my life, through worship and education. To be a disciple of Christ means to live our faith, to help the poor, the hungry, those who are imprisoned and ignored on the margins of our society, just as Jesus did. An indigenous Christian would also include creation as one that is oppressed that we are called to be Christ-like to creation, to live out one's faith or spirituality means to pray with, to lift up and protect creation that has long been ignored. This is why I feel such a, a kinship here whenever I am part of sacred earth meetings. It is so deep within our bones here. But one of the best examples that I have also lived outside of this church has been through meeting a woman associated with All Nations Indian Church. UCC is Sharon Day. In 2014, my, 
I and a, another member of Just North Church, Joanne Nay, joined one of Sharon's water walks, or also what is known in the Ojibwe language, Nibi walks, when she was walking the Ohio River. As an elder woman, a grandmother, in the Ojibwe lang culture, it is up to women to care for the water. With the help of many from all over the country, Sharon has walked the length of the Mississippi River, the Missouri River, Colorado River, Chicago, the Cuyahoga, and countless lakes. These Nibi walks are based in ceremonial teachings of the Ojibwe. But for this particular walk in 2014, she chose the Ohio River because it was, and still is today, declared the most polluted river in the United States, according to the EPA. I will say that again. The Ohio River is, has and is continued to be declared the most polluted river in the United States today. For this ceremony, we wear long skirts in respect. We are helped by walking in a relay, each walking a mile at a time, carrying a copper bucket covered in red cloth. This bucket is filled with the water of the body of water that we are walking. We carry this bucket and we are constantly moving. When we are done with our mile, we pass it along to somebody else. And when we pass it, as we are moving, like the river, we say this prayer. Niga, Ezekije, Nibi, Anje. Anishinaabe for I will do it for the water. Along with this ceremony of healing for each of these bodies of water, she also advocates and speaks to groups along the way and what they can do for the water. Often in her advocacy work, she asks the question, what will you do for the water? My walk with Sharon led me to follow one of the most well-known indigenous environmentalists, Winona Leduc, and also an Anishinaabe Ojibwe enrolled, only she is an enrolled member of the Mississippi Band who lives and works on the White Earth Reservation in northern Minnesota. The goal of Winona and her organization, Honor the Earth, is to create awareness and financial and even political support for indigenous initiatives. From helping reservations to get solar panels, to planting a garden, to protecting pipelines. My primary experience with her is to protect the water against pipelines. Personally, I have had the privilege to attend as part of a 
interfaith witness back in 2016 to be at Standing Rock, to be with one of the water protectors, to protect the water of, of a, the pipeline that was going not through, um, you know, the, the white city in North Dakota, but straight through the reservation, through the water, contaminate the water and sacred grounds. DAPL, or D-A-P-L. The United States currently has two million miles of pipelines. As Winona would say, the pipes leak. They just do. Oil is corrosive. It cor it's corrosive not only to the pipes that try to carry it, but corrosive to the ground, to the water, and all of our way of life. This interfaith witness gave me hope. Standing Rock gives and still does hope for the future of the water. You see, for the first time at Standing Rock, indigenous nations came together to speak for the water, to, to stand together against colonial powers of these multinational companies that want to put a pipeline through their sacred land, through their cemeteries, through the places where their children play. It was the first time that they came together and that inter so many people of many faiths came together with them in support for this one phrase, a one call, to say that water is life. Water is life. Sounds pretty close to living water. It's a simple phrase, water is life. We only need further to look at our own bodies. We are thirsty for this living water. We are thirsty for a new relationship with creation, with God, because we know that water is life. We know in our head, at least, that God has created this water and therefore we are in relationship with it just as we are in relationship with God. Because God created all of this and said it was good. It is good. So I ask you in closing, what will you do for the water? Amen.